morning, everybody, and welcome to our Family Matters podcast. As you know, Family Matters has launched this podcast and in order to bring more information and resources to parents and caregivers and self-advocates within the state of Illinois. We hope to bring you key information on how to better your personalized plan for school and your tra personalized transition plan. Um, as with everything Family Matters does, please remember that Family Matters is not a legal agency and cannot provide legal advice. Information you receive from us in this podcast should not be construed as legal advice. Family Matters is one of the two parent training and information centers that are federally funded um, in the state of Illinois. So, and the contents of our podcast were developed under a grant from the U.S. Department of Education. However, those con this content does not necessarily represent the policy of the U.S. Department of Education. So, today we are going to talk about extended school year services. So, it's the end of um, April. Well, middle of April, coming up on the end of April. Um, lots of kids are thinking about uh, what they're going to do this summer. Um, prom is coming up. We have prom this weekend. You know, all the fun things for summer is coming up. But summer or extended breaks from school can um, really put a stall on kids' education plans sometimes, um, especially when they receive um, related services from a school district. So today we're going to talk about what extended school year services are, um, who qualifies for extended, year extended school year services, and finally, um, how you go about seeing if your child would qualify for extended school year services. So today we are using, if you're listening to this, we are using um, a document from the Illinois State Board of Education called Extended School Year Services Frequently Asked Questions. You can find a link to this document on our website right underneath this podcast. Um, and um, if you are watching this, then I am sharing my screen and so we can discuss the document. So this was from March of 2021, so fairly up to date, not super old, but this is a great document to refer back to. We share this with parents a lot. So extended school year services are services that are provided to children with specialized education plans, um, and they, they are provided beyond the normal school year or school day um, of the public agency. It goes in accordance with the child's IEP, and it's at no cost to the parent. So they must also meet requirements of the state's educational agency. So. These services are not summer school. It's very different. And yes, ESY usually takes place over summer because that's the largest break for kids from school, but they are not summer school. They're completely different. These, um, these services can, I mean, it's tailored really to what your child needs. And, and um, we're going to talk just a minute, a minute about who qualifies and how you can qualify. But um, they they could be anything from speech and OT services once a day or once a week, or they could be access to the school's vocational department. It really depends on your child, the goals they're working on in their IEP, and if they're going to show um, some regression over an extended extended break from the school, and if they are going to lack. Um, you know, be slow to make progress when they return in the fall or return after Christmas break. So extended school year services can happen over the summertime. They can happen over um, Christmas break, Easter break, weekends away from school. Um, it, it, really, it, it really depends on what your student needs. And we discuss the need for education or extended school year services Every year at your child's annual IEP meeting, we should be discussing the need for educational um, or for extended school year services. So it's part of the IEP, it's towards the back. Um, but as we go over and we review the progress that your student has made, by getting those progress reports, by getting those report cards, you're also getting a printout of the progress they're making towards their goals. And if you start to see that over Christmas break when he came back in January, uh, he struggled to get back in the hang of things and make progress or he regressed in any way, this could be an indication that extended school year services are needed. You can also see that extended school year services may be needed if your child has a emerging skill that we really want to keep working on or it's almost to mastering that skill and we don't want to take a break away from it, you can talk about the need for extended school year services to your school. 
So one of the questions that we get a lot in here is, can my district have a policy to not provide extended school year services in any instance? So the answer to that is no. Your school cannot develop a policy in which they do not provide extended school year services. ESY is part of IDEA, it's part of uh, your child's FAPE, your free and appropriate public education, and a school district cannot come and say, we do not offer ESY or we have a policy not to offer ESY. Now, does that mean that some school districts won't have access to a speech pathologist over summer or um, someone um, to work on a math goal over the summer? The answer to that is yes. Okay, they, they could possibly not have staff to fulfill that, but then it's your job to sit down at a table with the IEP team and talk about how they can they fulfill that. Can they send them to another school district for ESY over the summer? Can they um, provide virtual therapy in some cases? I see a lot of districts in rural areas that will have kids go to the local hospital for um, speech or OT services. So the answer to that question is no, your school has to provide you some type of ESY if you agree as a team that your child qualifies for that. So let's talk about qualifying for it. You must be provide um, ESY must be provided only if the student's IEP, IEP team um, on an individual basis. So we're not saying we're not going to give it to anybody. This is per your child's IEP. It, they determine the ESY services are necessary under FAPE. So as an IEP team, um, with all decisions, it's a team decision. Um, it can be disputed if if you feel like you should have or shouldn't have gotten it. Um, it, it's a team decision to make. So it's important to note that IDEA stipulates that individuals' um, consideration of a student's need for ESY should not be limited to extended school year services to a particular category of disability. So we can't say we only give ESY students to um, ESY services to students with autism, or it, it really depends on your student and their need. So what data should be considered? Well, like I said before, the student's progress. Um, did the student make progress towards their goals? Um, to what extent were the were IEP goals met? Does the data and, and other relative information reflect any decline in services after a break has happened? So a break can, like I said, be a winter break, fall break, spring break, even weekends from school for some kids. So our, our kiddos with higher support needs and our kiddos with um, really intensive maybe occupational therapy goals or physical therapy goals um, can even see some regression over a weekend of not moving their body or um, that type of thing. So, so we really want to look at the rate of the progress that they're having because when they come back in the fall, is that rate of progress going to be slower and then we're not going to meet the goals like we need to. So I don't want to get too much into the the, the huge details of it, but make sure that you're looking at factors, you know, okay, you know, Megan was gone from uh, for Christmas break, and right before Christmas break, Megan was at 60% toward mastering her goal. At the next progress report, Megan was then at 40%. What could have made that, you know, what, what could have made that decline? Can we consider that break as part of the reason she declined? So that would indicate a need for summer services, or excuse me, school year services. Um, they are not restricted necessarily to the summer only, although ESY services are typically provided during the summer months um, because that's the biggest break from school. There should be a documented statement in your IEP um, that says the student does not qualify or does qualify for ESY services. And like I said before, um, you can um, dispute that if you feel like you discussed it and, and you feel like that your student needs this and maybe the district felt like they didn't. ESY services are voluntary though. You as a parent can decline services for your student. So just keep that in the back of your mind. Um, no, ESY is not just for related services. And I'll give you an example. Um, my son has autism and dysgraphia, and we were working really hard, really hard toward his reading and writing goal over the summer, or uh, last school year. And I was worried about um, how we were going to have access to keep working on it. And um, I talked about this during the IEP team in a meeting, and I and I talked about my, you know, we were nervous about this. We were on a waiting list for, uh, like, an academic intervention clinic through our local university, but we didn't have a lot. I didn't want him to lose the routine that he was getting with working on it every day. I didn't want him to lose the momentum and what he was gaining. So our school uses a virtual platform called IXL Math, which is more than math. It has many, many different um, 
programs, you know, for reading, writing, spelling, all of it. So in a way, I proposed the idea. I said, could my son have access to the IXL math platform over the summer? And we could sit here and, and, and determine that he would do 15 minutes a day of IXL just to keep the stuff going fresh in his mind. Now, this is a genius way to bring to everybody's attention that my son needs ESY. We were in agreement that he, you know, we were worried that he would regress in his skills that he was learning over the summer. But um, the school was already paying for this platform, already had this platform. I could pay for this platform on my own, obviously, but if he, you know, it, could this be a way the school could fulfill his ESY? And yes, that's what we agreed upon. So um, that meant once a week I was checking that he was doing his work and then someone, that was his special education teacher, was keeping track if he was making sufficient progress towards working towards his goal over the summer. So that was, you know, they incorporated that into it. So that's kind of like a unique way of doing ESY. So it doesn't necessarily just have to be about speech, OT therapy, PT therapy, music therapy, all those things. It can be all about what your student needs. Must least restricted environment require, requirements be considered in, um, during ESY? And the answer is yes. And I have many children, guys, but my oldest son, is he attends a therapeutic day program. So his ESY program runs all, all most of the summer. I think they only take like four weeks off. And it is an all-day program because they incorporate different things. And that doesn't mean he's getting ESY services all summer long. Like some of, some of it is through a, diff, a grant funded differently. But what's great about the ESY services that they offer is they bring in other people into this program and they do many different things. And he has access to non-disabled peers during this time. So it's a way and actually his environment becomes less restricted over his ESY services because he is, you know, doing stuff with Boy Scouts, he's doing stuff with youth group, he's going to Knights Action Park, all of these things. So it's actually ESY can be a great time to giving um, help and time with um, their non-disabled peers. Again, summer school is different from ESY services. ESY services are for special education and related services that are provided to a child with a disability beyond the regular school calendar year. Summer school is different. Summer school programs are typically general education courses offered outside the regular school calendar as a way for students to avoid being retained. Um, a student with a disability may participate in general education summer school program and still have ESY. That's not a problem, but they are two separate programs. So, um, and of course, if they're attending summer school um, already, can their ESY services be provided? Absolutely, you could sit down and talk about the frequency, duration, what they're going to need for their ESY over that time. So, and going along with that, a student with a disability cannot be excluded from summer school if your district is offering summer school. So, in a short, very short time period, I have just explained a lot of information to you. I know this isn't the typical way we've done podcasts so far, but I thought it was important as summer is approaching, as a lot of you are going into your IEP season, that you understand what ESY is. Um, you really think about the need for ESY when you're asking your district to provide it. And if you need help reviewing the progress of your student's IEP, please contact Family Matters Parent Training and Information Center. We would be happy to schedule a time with you and review your child's progress records for their goals and help you prepare for that meeting. So I hope everybody has a great rest of their day. Um, I hope you enjoy the approaching school break that's coming. Um, I'm I'm happy. I'm I'm ready for the break for sure. <laughs> so. Um, and we'll see you again on our podcast soon.